Hey, folks, Quilly Team here, and welcome, welcome, welcome to another live stream of Dwarf Fortress. Let's get the main screen turned on. Hello, everybody. I hope you're excited for today's stream because I am. I've been dreaming about this because this is a stream where we are going to break out of our fortress and attempt to fight off the undead dwarven invaders. Or un well, the undead invaders. Some of them are dwarves, some of them are humans. It's a mixed bag of zombies out there. Let's hope that we can uh, liberate ourselves from this incredibly long besiegement. I think it's uh, it's been many moons. We might be coming on near a year at this point. I actually don't know when the siege started. Uh, I'd have to go back through the VODs because I don't think there's a way to check that in game here. But um, yeah, we will see. We will see. We will see. Bump, bump, bump. And then, yeah, after we clear out the uh, undead from around the area, we're going to want to raid eventually that undead tower and hopefully burn it to the ground so that we can't keep, don't keep getting these uh, these undead invasions because they are terrifying. Absolutely terrifying. Keyword being attempt. Absolutely. This might be the end of this fort. This could go incredibly badly. We don't know yet. We'll see. And yeah, still scratchy in the throat. I don't know what's going on with that. Very frustrating. But, uh... You know, I don't know, maybe this is what I sound like now. Could be. Boom, boom, ba boom, boom, ba boom, boom, ba boom, boom, ba boom, ba boom, boom, ba boom, ba boom. Shout out to, we got a new sub, uh, Buddha Machine subscribed during the pre stream. Thank you very much for that. I also got resubs from a Swedish Twig at 45 months, Perks at 16 months, Raptor Online at 54, Red Ren at 7 months, J Rufu at 19 months, Alvanius at 53 months. Thank you very much for the resubs. Love how the Reddit, DF Reddit got 20k. Yeah, man, the viewership on the uh, Dwarf Fortress Reddit has been crazy since the release of this. Um, the Steam Edition has been very successful. They've sold a lot of copies. Hey, so cool. the uh, the brothers are uh, are sorted now, which is great. Hey, Johansson, thank you very much for the sub as well. Remembering that Twitch Prime button. Twitch doesn't make it easy for you to remember that you've got a free one sitting around. So if you've got a Twitch Prime sub sitting idle, hit that button. It doesn't have to be on my channel. But maybe it could be. If Remy says they missed DF Hack, yeah, DF Hack's got a lot of great quality of life stuff. Um, but they are working on it. Because it is just Dwarf Fortress here. They've got to get all the new uh, all the new memory mappings and things like that. But eventually, DF Hack will be brought to the Steam version over here. Do you know how you can see room quality in this version? I do not. Do you know? Or are you just asking if there is a way? Yeah, so I, I don't know. So one thing is, um, I think my sound might still be a little loud. I think the last couple of videos people were saying uh, the music was still a bit on the loud side. Wait, does the master volume not do anything? No, it does. All right. Doesn't seem to be do, do much. Hey, Quill, pay attention. There's a new subscriber. Maybe it's like a logarithmic thing or something weird. We'll see. <laughs> hey, Devious Dingo, thank you. Don't give you my free Prime sub. You get the regular paid one. Hey, Scave Rat. Siege has been going on since one granite, early spring, 102. How did you know that, J. Rufu? Did you just go back and check? Because, yeah, I don't think there's, um, without being able to access the announcement file, and even then we'd have to scroll back quite a lot. So, yeah, we are coming up on nearly a year, nearly a year of this siege, but we're going to bust out soon, so we'll see. He started. Oh, that would explain it. Bum, 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 bum. Experience with master volume doesn't affect the music much, yeah. Uh, part of it as well is it, it makes it hard to tune the uh, the volume settings because the songs come and go, and some of them are quite a bit louder than others. So uh, let me know if uh, one of the songs gets a little bit overwhelming at some point. We will we will see. Mm -hmm. Use grep. Yeah, well, we could except the um, in the Steam version currently the announcement file is not written uh, to a text file. Hey, Quill, pay um, like it is in classic, although they, they have already talked about bringing that back. So a lot of changes are happening. Hey, survivor, Greg, I think, um, I suspect they, they had to, um, cut a few, like, uh, a few features from, from being available at release for the steam edition, just to try to make it out for a certain time. Um, you know, stability was like the first kind of thing and most of the features there and then you know they, they've already patched they've got like two patches since release that have done a few tweaks uh they got rid of the scree scree bird sound uh they they re added in a great uh a button to be able to bulk select materials again um plus lots of other fixes and, and little things like that um so yeah i assume those features are going to be coming back here <laughs> year with zombies sounds like a gilderoy lockhart book oh my god yeah 
you four sieges longer than a year. I mean, yeah, I mean, in real real life sieges have gone on longer than that too. It doesn't happen very often in Dwarf Fortress, but yeah. So probably it'll probably be the one year anniversary of the siege by the time we bust out. Was the bird sound the thing that sounded like a plane going down? No, it's more of a just a re re kind of kind of thing. Um, uh, it was a grasslands biome thing, which we're on. Different biomes have different ambient sounds, and a bunch of them did get tweaked. So depending on where you were playing, you might have had different announce sounds. Okay. Let's give a little tour over here and a catch-up in case anyone missed anything somewhere along the way. We've embarked on a grassland. It's relatively flat. It does have uh, one little extra hill area over here, but that's about it. We've got our fort blockaded off with walls. We, to prevent climbing, we were working on an overhanging floor thing, but while this, we were working on this, a necromancer showed up with a couple of their undead, um, well, what are they called again? He's with a couple of these putrid slayers, plus some zombies as well. Um, and then the necromancer leaves is the way it seems to appear. I think the necromancer shows up to be able to raise anything that's that might be dead on the surface, raise them to make more undead, and we've got that. And most forts do run away, do... More sieges, sorry, do end after a while, but I guess the undead ones just keep on going. Um, so we've been locked in our base since then. We have lost a few dwarves in an annoying way because our dwarves were going up to the second level. I was doing that so that we could shoot with our crossbows, but then some of them were either being pulled down or were dodging, or maybe they ran out of ammo and they decided to jump down. But we had a few dwarves, for whatever reason, go from the top of this wall down onto the ground where they then get beaten to death by zombies. Uh, so we've lost a couple of that. So currently we've got everyone fairly restricted to not go up there. Um, I think I did it by removing the ramp ultimately because the burrow system was really awkward. That's something else that I'd like to see some tweaks um, set up in uh, in this version of Dwarf Fortress. I'm sure it will come, but I think our solution was just to get rid of the ramp so that our dwarves can't go up to that area anymore. And things have been stable since then. Once we add fortification, that will fix the issue, yeah. But currently, I can't really do construction up here because the civilians that come up to do construction, they see the undead and they get scared and they have to run away. So we're not going to be able to complete construction of our defenses up here until the undead are dealt with, which hopefully we're going to be doing soon. So this is our surface. We've got our uh, we've got a little butcher shop set up there, some refuse pile. Uh, this is a corpse stockpile in case we've got any. We can sort them out there. And then we do have the actual entranceway to our fort walled off, and it's got a little bit of a roof on there as well just to try to keep wild animals from randomly flying in here how does the fortification help so the fortification is basically like it's an arrow slit it's a wall wall with an arrow slit in it is basically the way you think about it so that will stop dwarves from being able to fall off the edge or do anything like that also if we do get attacked by people with actual crossbows they're going to have a hard time shooting our dwarves through the arrow slits whereas we're going to be able to shoot through them perfectly fine so yeah we're going to get some fortifications all along here and we'll have a nice two tile wide walking path because they can walk on top of the wall plus walk on top of the floor and then we'll have the fortification on the outside and it should be a beautiful thing We'll find out, but that's for after we deal with the siege. So as we delve downwards into our little base over here, we've got uh, our farming level here. Um, I did dig out this larger area for now, mostly because we did pop the cavern layer. So that is gonna invite now, there's gonna be uh, fungus and various bushes and stuff like that that are gonna grow in here. We'll probably put some farming plots down uh, relatively soon as well. The other thing I've done in between streams actually is our plump helmet, um, growing area as well as the area where we are growing um pigtail i do have it set that we're going to start fertilizing it we're going to have to start making some potash but we're going to start doing a little bit of fertilization here although ultimately i do want to move my farming probably down into the cavern layer which is going to be very fertile so we'll see definitely need to make a tower on the corner so you can shoot along the wall side yeah and we'll probably do that we did that in our seven pillars fort and it works really well so as we continue to go down a little bit, this was just an um, exploratory sort of like digging tunnel area. This area here, this is our hospital, as well as we have our tombs over here for our fallen dwarves, plus some slabs that we had to um, engrave because some of our dwarves died outside the walls because of the issues we just discussed. So we had to engrave them onto slabs instead. This one doesn't look like it has anything written on it. Yeah, this one's just a dummy slab. And I actually thought when we were putting them down that I might have grabbed one wrong. So I can actually deconstruct or remove this building, put it back into storage so that we can engrave it for the next time we have a dead dwarf with no body. Over here, we have our main production floor. So we have a variety of workshops flanking a central stockpile. Now, even though the stockpile is in four rooms, it is just one stockpile. One of the things I was doing is in this custom stockpile, 
I was storing bones and shells because they can be used for crafting. But I was just doing some reading today and I hadn't realized that if you have anything in the refuse category activated, the entire stockpile ha gets the refuse flag for the purpose of things decaying. Um, most things that are stockpile, like if you put clothing in a stockpile, it it lasts for a long time. It might it might slowly deteriorate, but it's very slow. However, when you put something in a refuse stockpile, it deteriorates extremely quickly, and that's by design. The idea being things you don't want get put in a refuse file, uh, a pile, and then they decay over time and, and then disappear. It helps clean it up. Um, so what was happening here by having uh, the ability to keep bones and shells in our main stockpile, it was getting flagged as a refuge stockpile, and some things that were being stored were probably deteriorating a lot faster than we would have wanted, which I hadn't realized. It was actually an accident. I was getting ready to set up a clothing industry today, and I was doing some reading on if you don't use DF hack, how do you how do you organize um, your your worn clothing and or sorting all that? And I saw the note about the uh, the refuge stockpile, and it was like, oh, whoops. That might be a bit of a of a of a thing we've got to deal with. So got that turned off for now, which is going to be all right. So we got that. I am designated a new area to be dug out over here. This is going to be used for storing our fresh, freshly made made clothing. Um, we'll get once that gets dug out and stuff. We're gonna we're gonna organize our clothing industry um, at that point. Now, we don't have that much cloth. Like our our pigtail growth isn't that substantial yet, but hopefully we can get that going uh, relatively soon. If we go down a bit, this whole area was carved out because we. Um, we mostly because we wanted a bunch of mudstone blocks uh, a, a while ago. So we did that so we'd have access to plenty of mudstone blocks for our basic crafting. Um, we were talking about, oh, maybe we could put the tavern in here. Decided to change my mind about that. This might get used for extra stockpile space. In fact, it almost certainly will. But for now, it's not doing anything, and that's okay. Then if we keep going down another level, we get to our living quarters floor, which for a little while was looking like a really cool pengu. Now it's like a pengu with, like, a big old brain tumor or something like that. Um, we've got our dining hall slash tavern over here. This area over here, the reason it's not symmetrical is because I wanted room for a dance floor. With a tavern, if you have at least, I think you need at least a five by five area open um, to ha be able to do performances and stuff like that. I think this is six by six over here, but that way we can have some performances, which are great. We got bins over here so we can st store some mugs as well as some musical instruments if we got them so we can have a nicely functioning little uh, tavern. Uh, we've also got over on this side, this is a tavern or a temple to a particular god and there's over here a temple to another god over here. Although I'm realizing what I really just need to do is get a generic temple set up because you really only need a... Um, a, a temple to a specific god, I think, when you have more than, I think when you get more than 10 believers or 10 followers of a specific god, they were coming to request a, an actual proper organized temple. So I think I could go and switch this up. I made these temples to these two specific gods because we had some, a cranky person at some point who hadn't been able to pray to those. So I was like, well, I'll make a temple to those two gods, but they will pray, I believe, to it in a generic temple. So I'll probably set that up. Maybe I'll do that now, actually. I think I might do that now. Yeah. Um, I'm going to make a new location. It's going to be a new temple to no god. Um, so the pristine fountain is going to be the name of that. And this is going to be temple generic, just so that I can keep track of it here. There we go. So we have a generic temple over here to no specific deity. And um, that should help. This should go over there. Temple in the big open area. Oh, we could over here you mean oh that would be interesting too we could we could look into that but let's just set that up for now that's going to work out fine then we have some bedrooms here we we don't have all the bedrooms done yet and yes someone just said the bedrooms on the left hand side are not smooth yet uh that is correct um i think i haven't smoothed it because i didn't want to overwork our dwarves too much because we have a lot of things in our work queue still right now um but this is seven so 14 over here 21 bedrooms we have 26 dwarves some of them are married and things so they will share rooms but we probably want a little bit more what i was actually thinking of doing here is just making this a nice multiple of 10 in fact i think i'm gonna do that now um i should have a macro for three two three by two bedrooms and if i go into mining room hopefully they're the right way around there we go um but to do like that there we go oh that macro is for uh, a slightly different layout okay that's okay the macro I had set up is for a game where I had, uh, I think that's the macro I set up in the YouTube series, where I have a one-tile wide hallway for the bedrooms. That's okay. 
Uh, da, da, da. I keep trying to hit D still for designations for the minings. Old school classic dwarf fortress there. What I think I will do is actually won't mind. In fact, even here maybe. Yeah, let me go and just cancel this. Um, we don't need to dig this out yet, but this is going to be the size I use so that we have nice blocks of like 10 per line here. So 20 in the set. And that'll be 40 overall, but we obviously don't need that many bedrooms right now. Um, in fact, if we get the rest of this decorated out, then we're going to be just fine and groovy. Um, I wonder if we have the material for more. Do we have more beds? Uh, use closest. Keep building afterwards. Oh, we do. Okay, how about uh, doors? Oh, yeah. How are we doing on chests so that dwarves can store their personal belongings? We had queued up a bunch at some point. Looks like they're all ready to go. And finally, how about cabinets so that they can store some old clothes in there? Uh, right here. So those are all done. That's all done now. Oh, wow. Yeah, we had completed this task. Maybe? Completely? Nice. Okay, good. So those all get decked out. And I think, I think that even though we don't have the furniture yet installed here, it's still being carried, I think it will let us do the bedroom uh, multi-paint with just the, uh, the ghostly image off of them. Yeah, that's very convenient, actually. There you go. So those are all designated to be bedrooms now. So now we have enough bedrooms for each dwarf and then some to spare. So that's going to be great. Okay. Wish we could place them before we got them made. Yeah. So DF hack um, in the classic version does have a, uh, a planning mode feature for placing furniture. I would love that brought into the main game where, yeah, you can pre-place something. And then once it gets constructed, it'll get brought over. Maybe one day. Hey, Tracer. Thanks for the reset. <laughs> a planning mode might be my number one request from DF hack to be brought into the main game. It would help with uh, wall building as well. Okay, so um, I think that's the full tour. If we keep going down, at some point... Uh, oh, this was to dig out chalk, which we needed for flux stone. Um, in fact, it looks like we probably have to assign more digging over here. I'm going to make it super low priority. But yeah, keep digging out this chalk area here. Flux stone is used for making, uh, for our steel industry. So we need that to keep happening. And if we keep going down, 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 eventually one of our little exploratory tunnels had discovered the cavern here. Uh, we've got them walled off here and here so that nothing can actually crawl into the cavern this way. We did continue to dig down. We made a little side jaunt over here and dug down to here. So this is a floor. This is a mudstone floor or well, it's a muddy floor. Um, we're in the middle of this pillar, but we haven't actually breached it over here. So we've found the cavern whenever we want. We can mine out this little tile, for example, and then our dwarves will be able to explore the, can the, the cavern. But I'm going to wait to do that until we deal with the undead outside. So let's talk about our current um, uh, squad. Jack Corvus asks, are the caverns dangerous? So there's some risk inherent in the caverns. Do I not actually have a hotkey for the cavern itself? I have a hotkey for this level. Now, let me change that. There we go. Let's put it on uh, F6 for cavern one. Well, I assume it's cavern level one. There's three caverns. It's possible that we missed one on our way down, but I'm assuming this is cavern level one. Um, pause. We're getting some combat here. The caverns are, there's a slight risk. So there's likely going to be critters that live in the caverns. Um, they can be of variable danger levels. Um, troglodytes and things like that. I mean, they can be a problem for your civilians. They're not really going to be a problem for our military dwarves. The big thing will be, how do we just make sure they're just not wandering around our, our, our fortress too much? One of the things I tend to do is I just set up a little barracks over here, a little training room for my military. So then there generally is military dwarves just kind of hanging out around here, and they will just sort of casually kill most of those things. However, um, Forgotten Beasts, which are creatures of ancient legend and lore can arrive through the caverns and they can be incredibly dangerous slash fun but 
for now, what is going on combat-wise? Okay, the undead are fighting more of the kangaroo that are on our surface. Apparently, we've colonized uh, Australia here. So the undead are just going around. They're killing creatures on the surface. So we'll get those little combat notifications from time to time. Okay, so looking at our squad here, the big thing we're looking forward to is the Crimson Dyes, which are melee dwarves, uh, getting them kitted out. They We have made a bunch of melee weapons. Uh, okay, this one I didn't make, the Copper Battle Axe, but I think we did make a bunch of steel. Oh, Silver Warhammers, that's what we're doing. Silver is extremely dense and heavy. It makes for excellent Warhammers. It's terrible material for anything that needs a sharp edge because it's soft and therefore loses its edge very quickly. Uh, so, but Silver Warhammers are the best, like, blunt weapon that we can make. Um, and then we'd also probably like Steel Battle Axes, but right now our steel is going towards armor. Um, ooh, that is a very worn down Steel Mail shirt. That may or may not be one that we built. Well, it probably is. So they're getting worn. Pro well, I mean, they get worn out just by being physically worn by our dwarves. But in addition to that, um, while our dwarves are training, they can get a bit more wear and stuff like that. But we're going to try to get all of our dwarves in a steel mail shirt. Um, and we're currently working on the helmet production as well. And that'll probably be our go time signal because I really do want to bust this open. Um, so I don't really want to wait until we have like literally every piece of gear. But we'll do that. Um, and then our rough bows, these are our range people. Uh, they've got crossbows equipped. They're not currently armored, but uh, it'll have to do. Hopefully the crimson dyes will just front line for us while we provide some range support behind. Is there any way in game to know which metal is good for what? I'm, I'm not sure that there is. It's really, I mean, no, it's really, the info is really in the, the, the raw files or you go to the wiki and that's usually what you're looking for. More kangaroo combat. All right. Yeah, really looking forward to um, to opening things up on the outside. Okay, so before the stream started, I did cancel a couple of jobs and reorganized and um, did, did some little tweaks to our production queue and our work orders. Also at the bottom here, I did put in an automated job to make ash as well as to make potash. Potash is what we're going to use for a fertilizer. So we got those sorted. Um, I don't remember where potash gets made. Is it at a wood furnace? No, that's where you make ash. There's an asher. There's a. Um, there's an ashery. I don't know if we've got one. I suspect the answer is no. So let's build an ashery over here. Oh, <coughs> you know what I want to do? Cancel. As we've discovered, making buildings out of jet looks really, really good. So I'm gonna select the material intentionally here, and yeah, use a jet block. Oh yeah, it needs access to barrels and buckets and things like that. So these buildings here that are in dark colors, those are made out of jet. They look beautiful. So I do have a job uh, where we make uh, one, uh, well, we, we cut down one jet boulder every day. Just a little casual stone worker's job to keep a steady supply of jet blocks because they are gorgeous. Combat sound reminds you of Gallery Counter? Yeah. Or some people describe it as popcorn. Ooh, reindeer fighting now. So yeah, we're getting these combat notifications, but it's just the undead. Uh, fighting animals on the surface. Hopefully. Hopefully it's at no point are they breaching our, our thing. It does sound like dice rolling, yeah. Oh yeah, Ashery's in place. We can confirm. Yeah, that's where we can make lye, as well as making ash, which is great. We needed an Ashery at some point to make our to get our soap industry going on as well. So that's gonna be cool. Save Rudolph. Yeah, that probably is based on dice sounds. But yeah, we've got a few cranky dwarves, unfortunately. More kangaroo combat. Check a look at the logs. Okay, yeah, we do have some digging going on. Right. To get us more chalk. We do need a st steady supply of that. Santa was made into a zombie. <laughs> what self-respecting dwarf uses soap? So the dwarves don't actually use soap day to day. Uh, the soap is only used in the hospital. I don't think dwarves use soap um, in any other situation. Which, you know, makes sense because they're dwarves. What is this dude? Oh, it's someone armored. I thought, I th this person here, I thought they were blue, but no, they're just wearing a steel helmet and forging some more. Excellent. Dwarves use soap if you allow it? Oh, yeah? Do they? Do they clean themselves? Hmm. You have enough tables for the hospital? Oh, that's a good question. I forgot about that. We do need our operating tables in the hospital. Yep. Probably don't need that many. Did we ever, um set up a traction bench 
No, we don't have a traction bench. Did I ask for it? Looks like no. So I would like one traction bench, please. Actually, maybe I'm like two. Two traction benches. Throw a couple in here to help set some bones. Uh, Rhesus, a macaque. Fighting the zombies. All right. We could smooth this room as well so that the dwarves that are in here have slightly better thoughts about the area. And again, we'll do the same thing with the bedrooms. But for now, I really don't want to overload the work queue, especially since I really want to make sure we get our armor done. Yeah, most of our dwarves are going to be working in our metal industry. Well, maybe not most, but a lot of them are going to be doing that, right? Creating the coke from Lignite, keeping that going on. Any job cancellations that we should deal with? We need tanned hides. Soxel interrupted by human swordman. Where were you that you saw a human swordman? So this is where the alert was. That's why the square is blinking. So one of our dwarves was here and got interrupted by the presence of a zombie. How the hell did they see the zombie? I don't know. That's weird. They shouldn't have been able to see it. Was it just psychically knew that it was on the other side of the wall? Can they see through the drawbridge? That's an interesting question. Maybe. Maybe something like that. Maybe they heard it. Maybe. Alright, how's our squad coming? Okay. One more helmet to go. So the chain shirt protects their um, torso, their upper legs, and their upper arms. So it's sort of a, a long shirt with like, you know, upper arms kind of vibe. So hopefully that'll cover enough. The uh, zombies out there, the zombies are pretty tough and some of these guys are armored as well. No, we have no car fortifications on this ground floor. We are gonna be making fortifications on top floor. I don't want fortifications here because right now it would mean other invaders could walk up to the wall and shoot us through it, which would be poor. Oh, <laughs> this thing refilled with water again. We're gonna plug that up at some point so that it doesn't do this, but it's not a big deal. You have more than one layer of armor? Yeah, you can actually. There's like really weird things where like dwarves can wear like five cloaks and stuff and it like does help and all these kinds of things. Is it just fighting monkey still? Okay. There we go. All right. In theory, everyone's got a helmet ready to go. So I'm going to go equip. Um, not all of our archers have quivers actually. That might have been one of the reasons that they were jumping off the walls. Without quivers, I don't think they can carry arrows, and then they're gonna just try to use their crossbows as hammers. We don't have the leather to make quivers. I don't know if you can make quivers out of anything else. I think it's only leather. Oh, adamantine, which, no, thank you. I don't think I ever set up the job for it as well. I think we trade, oh no, I do have a job over here for leather quivers. I think we did trade for some, which is why some of our dwarves have it, but I don't know, I guess I'm gonna grab all these. I'm gonna tell them to station themselves over here. They'll, they'll, they're going to be activating themselves. Um, they might grab some equipment if they had to do some equipment swapping. So we're going to give them a moment to assemble, and then we'll get one of the off-duty dwarves to pull the lever and bring down the drawbridge. We do have some animals. We actually could generate some extra leather. And in fact, I mean, maybe... I really... It's not spring yet. You know what? We can take, we can take one more moment here. Um... Yeah, you know what? I'm going to slaughter everything here. We could keep the birds around, maybe for some egg industry. Yeah, I'm just going to slaughter all these. Because I really don't want to deal with grazing. did give them a chance to uh, make sure they were equipping their gear too so i guess that's not so bad um what i'm looking for more is i'm hoping i can buy a breeding set of pigs pigs don't have to graze 
um, unless things have changed in version 5.0 here. Uh, pigs don't have to graze, so it's really easy to just put them in a room underground and not have to micromanage things. Okay, kangaroo combat. Grazing Harden used to be, like, beat way more. I just, um, without DF hack, I find it really inconvenient to, like, filter for grazing and things. I just get annoyed by it. And right now, we don't have a very large grazing area, so. Your fort has 50 dogs, 50 cats running around. Wow, how's your frame rate? So, yeah, so a bunch of butchering is happening. We'll have plenty of bones kicking around. Oh yeah, I sh I'm probably going to change my uh, saves. I keep talking about it to change it away from seasonal, because things have been pretty sa stable. I don't know. We'll leave it. We'll leave it seasonal a little bit more. They're still putting out patches that fix crashes. I don't think I've gotten a crash yet. I can't. I can't recall. Did we ever have one? I feel like I don't feel like I've had a crash yet, but we'll keep them. Maybe we'll keep them here. Call you get away with putting yaks in a pretty small fungus room, but now the wiki tells me they need quite considerable, like thirty tiles each. I don't know. They do change some of the grazing amounts from time to time. Um, some things are more efficient than others. Flash of the Monk? Did we have a random visitor coming here to visit our tavern? Oh, the siege is lifted! Maybe, do they siege for a year and then take off? Did they leave the undead behind? Well, two of them are here. Where are these hostile ohm? Are they underground, probably? Yeah. They saw us gearing up and decided to leave. Oh, yeah. That one's... Are you leaving, too? Or are you just sitting on... Oh, there you go. Well, so much for a glorious battle. But, yeah, they were they're clearly terrified by us arming ourselves. So I'm going to pull the lever and bring down the, uh, the front gate. At least we'll be ready for whatever comes next. Lower the drawbridge. Pull the lever, Gronk. Okay. We are now open for business once more. Tell the world. And uh, we definitely would love some migration waves. Now, because we didn't trade last autumn, because there was a siege going on, so the caravans never showed up, uh, we might get some null migration waves. We will see. All right, let's get this constructing again. So, um, -da 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 -da. we need we need a ramp. There we go. Now we'll be able to get back up to the wall as soon as that ramp is built. And then once that happens, oh, uh, is there a priority for that? All oh, weird. Oh, no, there's no priority for the, the ramps. Okay. The Necromancer is recurring caldron to send the zombies every year just to mess with caravans. Yeah, possibly. Well, we are going to go and raid the, the the Necromancer's tower, but we're not looking to rush it quite as much. There we go. We can get our logs back in again, which is going to be nice. You know, it's pain. Do we want to replace our walls with jet block? I would love to, but it is kind of a pain to deconstruct and reconstruct everything. I'm surprised no one's gotten around to doing this yet, but... Probably doing a lot of hauling. No, you didn't miss the fight. Uh, the siege was lifted. I guess they only sieged for a year, and that's when they went. I knew the, their sieges lasted a limited amount of time, although I thought it lasted less long, um, and I, I thought that the undead siege was sticking around because maybe they never break. But I don't know. Maybe it's a random number of seasons. It turns out they sieged just for a year and then left. So no fight happened. They just took off, which is very convenient. A little anticlimactic, but... Hey, we're getting a strange mood. All right, Lore. Well, assuming you make an artifact, you're going to get a name from chat there, Lore. Actually, maybe I should name you now. Uh, ba -ba -ba, let's do that. Right here. Strange mood. Where's my dashboard? Rewards. Augury Defiant. Welcome to the fortress. Make us an awesome artifact.
You haven't actually claimed anything yet, right? Craft Dwarf Workshop. Okay. You do have the uh, you do have the dabbling stone crafter, so hopefully we get a um, an artifact mug. Could it happen? Maybe. Dev someday add Twitch integration. Yeah, one thing that was nice with our last run is I discovered how to create a nickname file that um, DF Hack uses to automatically nickname dwarves. So I was able to export the subscriber list, put that in a text file, and then DF Hack would read that. And so whenever there's a new dwarf that showed up, either, you know, given birth or a migration wave or anything like that, um, that didn't have a nickname, they would grab it from that. So all of the dwarves were automatically named after subscribers, which was super convenient. No, I didn't watch Larian Panel from Hell, but I have been reading the notes about it on the uh, the subreddit. They announced, uh, what, the full releases in August next year? Something like that? Jet Black Tower would be cool. Need two towers. Oh, two towers, Lord of the Rings. Or people said one big tower with like a red glowing eye somewhere in there. Very, uh, Sauron. We could make something like that. This still hasn't, this ramp still hasn't been built, huh? Wow. I'm actually quite surprised. We've begun a mysterious construction. Okay, hold on. What did you grab? You've got, whoa, that's a lot of material. Th this should be a fairly valuable artifact. Three mudstone boulders, steel bars, horse leather, table cut praises, and pecan wood logs, or pecan if you prefer. Wow. Mm -hmm. The 10K naming game is actually, yeah, I refunded all those. I'm only going off the 100K naming game right now. <laughs> because we spent so long without ever using any uh, channel points, they uh, some people had accumulated a lot. Paladin level five is announced. Oh, cool. So they are putting out, yeah, they are putting out one more beta. I was reading one more beta um, for the next release. What was the, what was the level cap before this? Was it level four? And yeah, I've been looking forward to the Paladin release. Although I've been very worried. I, I've avoided playing too much in the Baldur's Gate three beta because, oh, we did get migrants. Cool. Doesn't tell us how big the migrant wave is, but we can see our pop count go up. We were 27, I think, before or 26 before the migrant wave came. Um, yeah, I've been I've been hesitating doing the Baldur's Gate 3 beta because I didn't want to burn out on the early game before the full version comes out and then just be tired of it. Um, but I don't know. I might give it a go. Yeah, we might get uh, we might get uh, wear creatures. It's entirely possible. All right, Augury Defiant has created written kebble, a mudstone earring, offers it to the familial paints. Let's take a look at this artifact. Pause a sec. Object menu. So this stands for Begin Sparkled. Good name for an earring. This is a mudstone earring. All crops worship is of the highest quality. It is encrusted with cushion mudstone cabochons, studded with steel, and encircled with bands of horse leather. This object is adorned with hanging rings of pecan wood. On the item is the image of mango trees in mudstone. On the item is an image of Unib Gutterbelch, the persuasive stone, the hydra and dwarf in mudstone. The dwarf is striking down Unib Gutterbelch, the persuasive stone. The artwork relates to the killing of the Hydra, Unib Gutterbelch, the persuasive stone, by a dwarf in Shaken Speaks in the Common Plains in late summer of 21, during the rampage of the Hydra, Unib Gutterbelch, the persuasive stone in Shaken Speaks. Reminds me of, um, that name reminds me of the Monty Python squit, uh, skit with the guy with a super long name. On the item is the image of Tomo Hotflowers, the human, and Arani Phantom Numbras, the ashen, the vile freak in praise. Arani Phantom Numbras, the ashen, is striking down Tomo Hotflowers. The artwork relates to the killing of the human Tomo Hotflowers by the vile freak Arani Phantom Numbras in the ashen common plains in 62. There's a lot on here. It's valued at 2,000 dwarf bucks. It's got a question mark. Is it just that our broker is just a shit appraiser and so we're not getting accurate values for artifacts i'm wondering if that's the case of ulm exactly scuff norwegian yeah i'm wondering if that's the uh if that's the case because we do have a broker but i don't think esoteric fish is particularly good at that yeah we need to take it to the antiques roadshow exactly i need some liquidation just opening my Club soda, my little bubbly water. Best I can do is 2,000 dwarf bucks. <laughs> 10 migrants. No, it's 30 migrants. Oh my god, even more. They're still coming. We're at 51. This is a massive migrant. I guess they've been waiting for our the siege to be lifted here. 
We're up to 51 population. Well, okay, so there's good news and bad news. Good news is our production is going to shoot up like crazy. Bad news is we've got a lot of dwarves to bed and to feed. Let's go get ourselves a... Well, you know what? Let's breach the cavern and set up a farm there. On this little area over here. This pile of mud. This stuff is great for growing crops in. Let's do it. What could possibly go wrong? So we're going to mine this spot out here. Mm -hmm. And then, oh, I should check my labors because miners... Okay, we do have three people assigned to mining. That's good. Um, you know what? I'm going to make you specialized, Henzu. Focus just on mining exclusively, please. Okay. And yeah, we've got fishing turned off, which is good. And everything else, everyone does this. That's going to be okay. All right. Appraiser skills experience per trade. You can quickly level appraiser by doing multiple small trades with the next caravan. Oh, interesting. All right. So yeah, we're going to pop this open, which could also open us up to a variety of threats. We will see. Okay. That gave us more vision of the cavern as well. There's not even a ramp here. Okay. We're actually going to be, this is a plateau that we're going to be going on. Uh, oh no, there's a slope here. Okay. This side is a cliff. This side is a slope that keeps going down. All right, so this is possible for things to climb up, but I think what we'll do is put some walls down here. Let's very quickly consider something like that. Um, what am I looking for? Walls? Select material? Yeah. Let me plug this. Uh, we'll use blocks for it. Um, I mean, climbing is always possible as well. But for now, let's just plug the easily accessible areas. Gotta wait here so that they can do this because dwarves can't build diagonally, which is going to be a problem when we set up some of our fortifications. I don't know, maybe I will wall all this off. Because there are some more ramps over here. I guess I can search, but honestly, I think scrolling is going to be just as fast in this particular situation. Okay, let me start with that construction project. The other thing I'll do is I'll get some dwarves to cut down these uh, fungi wood. Fungi wood and tower cap. Some trees. And then also, we are 51 dwarves. That means we have 7 and 1 7 snow whites. <laughs> well, we don't, we don't know about any spiders yet, but there's a good chance we're going to get some. So yeah, now we're going to set up a new uh, farm plot. And I think this is perfectly fertile terrain and therefore will not need any um, fertilization. So we're not too worried about our size here. Okay, we'll get that down. We're going to start growing some more plump helmets. Uh, yeah, um, Noroth, I believe I believe there are... I think the, the game rule is something you haven't changed anything in World Gen. I think there will be three, ca three distinct caverns in your embark. So presumably we breach the first cavern here. Although again, it's possible... Somewhere along the way here, we missed a cavern layer, but most likely this is cavern level one. The third cavern is going to be the one that's got the magma sea, maybe some candy. Oh, this construction is happening very quick. Uh, construct walls. Just one more there. Jet. Okay, this is built. Great. We're going to grow plump helmet year round. Now, it says we don't have uh, seeds, which is accurate, but we do have plump helmets. Oh, this one here is lit. 
Oh, I thought it was saying no seeds unless we just generated one. Every time someone eats a plump helmet, which is a mushroom, or it, one gets brewed in alcohol, it will leave the seeds behind. So seed production will happen. I mean, we've got lots of food and lots of drink right now. It's not like we've got a shortage. I'm just getting ready to get some better food production going on for our new peeps. Sorry, bit of a hiccup there. <coughs> Trying to... Okay, I think it's settled. I can usually override my hiccups. Jet blocks. Jet, or do I have to scroll back up to the top? What the hell? Okay. If it looks like if you've started scrolling down and then you search, it probably hides it higher up, but doesn't show you a scroll bar because it's not big enough. So a little bit of a UI glitch over there. Very common. I've had that. I've experienced that in tons of different apps and games. Is there flying stuff down there? There there may be, yeah. So maybe we need some range tools and various things like that. Is Dwarf Fortress like RimWorld? Uh, yes, so RimWorld was, and and, and uh, Minecraft are were both directly influenced by Dwarf Fortress. The reason we have things like Minecraft and RimWorld is because Dwarf Fortress existed first. Um, but yes, mo it is very, very close to something like RimWorld. So RimWorld's a little smaller scale. You have fewer colonists. Um, so there's a little bit more of a of a personal story in RimWorld. Whereas in Dwarf Fortress, by default, you can have up to 200 population. We have 51 population in this fortress. So you're a little bit less concerned about individuals in Dwarf Fortress, but it is still a story generator and base builder, just like RimWorld. Okay, I'm gonna keep I'm gonna keep walling things over here. Again, until we get a a roof on this bad boy. I guess I could have left a door in there or built a drawbridge somewhere, but I can always unbuild the walls later to to open that up. For now, I'm just going to go ahead and do a very basic sealing off of this level. Oh, gift subs. Vordy, hey, thanks for the gift sub. I was digging. The digging goes well. Yeah, DF is the grandpa of every... Well, less city builder and more the grandpa of every, like, colony builder? Town builder kind of thing? Because obviously SimCity is the city builder one. And these are not city builders. These are base builders. Is the way I usually refer to things like Dwarf Fortress, Banished. Mm-hmm. How's this version control compared to the original? I heard it was difficult to control in some cases. Um, I think it's very good. Uh, I really like... My ba my favorite thing about this is the new way to look at your units. I find it a great way to get a, an overview of your units, which I think is fantastic. Um, it I have to you know relearn all my hotkeys, which can be a little frustrating, but that's the same for you know any game. Hotkeys are different because now you can use WASD to move around, so they default to different hotkeys. Although all the hotkeys are con uh, con uh, configurable, uh, so presumably you know one could go in reset everything to the way things were but i'm just going to try to learn the new defaults just to avoid some headaches um yeah no i don't know how old is war fortress so the two brothers and this is a game made by two brothers um one's the programmer and then the other one also helps with design and things like that uh, apparently they originally started making it in 2002 and the original release is 2006 so people have been playing dwarf fortress for a long 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 time um, but the steam version just came out last week and we're very hyped how many rooms do you have? That's a good question. We are um, we are currently at 28 rooms, but we were ready to dig out more uh, before the big migrant wave just came. And I guess it, we should probably get this going. So this will bring us up to a total of 40 bedrooms. I think I said 28, but that is incorrect. 14, 28, wait. Yeah, no, that was correct. We had 28. We're going to go up to 40 here. Uh, we clearly need more bedrooms, however, because we our population is now 51. And some dwarves will share bedrooms. What I'm going to do with this this thing here, it's not going to be a hallway. This area here is actually going to be a common dormitory. So I'm going to get that going now so that we have some places for our dwarves without individual bedrooms to sleep. So I'm just going to block this off and then 
Hopefully I've got a bunch of beds kicking around. No, we're going to have to order some more beds. Um, I clearly need to get... Okay, we need to add at least 12 more for this. I think I might make another block of 20, so up to 32 more. I'm going to want some beds in here. Let me order up like 40 beds. Make me 40 beds. So I can put 8 in this dormitory and then still have enough for everything else. Yeah. wonder if buying this game on Itchy... Oh, um, yeah, Itchio will give me non-DRM version. Uh, I don't think the Steam version has DRM either. Presumably, the uh, buying it on Itchio probably gives... Um, I think Itchio takes way less of a cut than Steam. Um, by all reports, Steam takes like 30% or something like that. So Itchio probably takes less. So presumably, you will get uh, more money towards the devs that way. <clears throat> it should just gives you a zip. Okay, it doesn't give you a Steam key, because I was wondering about that as well. Because, I mean, if it gives you a Steam key, then there's no reason not to hit a, pick it on itch. Um, the advantage of Steam is that, it, you know, it's all set up for auto-updating and all those things. Yeah, we have a bunch of goblin visitors over here. Some non-hostile goblins just hanging out in our tavern. Mm -hmm. It should take less to cut. The Val's Proton is super helpful. And no one's done anything like that yet. What is Valve's... What is Proton? Oh, yeah. Steam version is good for mods. Yeah, because it's got the workshop and stuff. Mm-hmm. Let's make some bedrooms for our tavern here so that our guests can maybe stick around longer and we can um, increase the chance that the visitors will stay, which can be useful for a variety of reasons. Oh, Proton is wine for gaming. Oh, yeah, duh. Okay. I just wasn't in the right context. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. So for your window, your, you, you, uh, Linux players can play things in a more integrated and easy way. Yep. I assume that's going to be a hallway here. I'm just going to carve that out for now. Uh, let me get building walls. These are mudstone. I wonder if we have mudstone blocks just to make the colors match. I mean, the constructed walls still look different. I guess I don't really care what kind of blocks we use. Actually, we could just use raw mudstone. It's sitting around here. It'll be very convenient to just grab. Yeah, that's probably what I'll do. Okay, uh, construct wall, select material afterwards. We do have some mudstone blocks that we can use there. Oh, wait. I'm doing this wrong. It's got to go here. I do miss being able to hit X to just... Uh, does this, this cancel designation? Does it cancel construction? No. This is slightly more tedious without one of the hotkeys, unfortunately. Uh, okay, back to construction, wall. Hey, hang on, am I fucking this up after all? I am effing this up. I was right. Oh, you cancel construction under mining? Okay. One of the things I do miss from uh, DF hack is remembering what was at the top. Or, like, whatever I used last, just putting it at the top of the list. Okay. I mean, this deconstructs, but the... Oh, it also cancels! Oh! I didn't realize that. So the tool that you use to deconstruct construction also cancels it. Alright, so we're gonna do this. We're just gonna have a little one-by-one -one little rooms off the tavern here. So yeah, this corridor here is actually gonna be a dormitory. Or put, I can put up to eight beds in there if I've got any beds available right now. I did just put in the order, so some may have gotten done. Okay, I have one whole one. Still, I will flag it as a dormitory now. I guess we can include these walls. Doesn't actually matter, but there we go. All right, so any bed, any dwarves without a bedroom, will go and sleep in here. There 
you go. Uh, I don't think we've got any music instruments for the tavern yet. No, we're gonna have to trade for some. We can craft it, I find it really annoying to craft music instruments. So I just tend to buy them. Lovely. I would do no doors for here. Okay, that's all. <clears throat> How deep can you mine? You can mine very deeply and very greedily. So my surface over here is currently level 48. So as I go in, we're gonna go down. Okay, we're now at level 40, 30, 20, 10. All right, here's level zero. Now we go to minus one, minus 10. There is a, um, a maximum negative Z level, there it is. Minus 129. So that's as deep as it is technically possible to dig. And then we can go up as well. There you go, plus 64 over here. Actually, I, I'm not sure, possible in the positive axis, you can go up even higher if you construct in that direction. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's where the fun is, exactly. Yeah, no, um, you can di dig deeply and greedily, otherwise it wouldn't be a proper dwarfy game. And you wanna dig deeply and greedily because there's some candy down there. Yeah, some delicious, delicious candy right down at the bottom. You can you can get it at the circus. What the heck is this thing? Is this a dwarf? Now, one thing I got to complain about is on the screen here, oh, I think if they're not dwarves, it actually tells us, that, wait, oh, wait, is your species sacred glacier? Or is that your title? Hang on. If I go to my tavern and find one of these goblins, goblin dancer, Is called. Oh, petition! Someone wants to come here. So Spitza Copperglad would like to live here. So they're going to become a permanent resident for the purpose of eradicating monsters. Nice. So one thing that happens when you do breach the cavern, I think it doesn't happen until then. I'm not sure. But this monster slayer, they want to go and uh, just roam around the cavern and just kill stuff. They just want to have fun, like, fighting bad guys. So that's actually kind of convenient. Let's go and put that there. And get a little bit of jet to block that off. There we go. So this is going to be sealed in, at least for anything that doesn't fly. Technically, so some of this is covered, right? This area over here is covering this because I'm I'm popping up. But here we could build a uh, we could build a roof here or build floor from the level above if we wanted to. But I might I might not stress about it right now. We'll go ahead and leave that there. And yeah, we got a little bit of farming that has started here. And yeah, it doesn't talk about fertility here because I think this floor has max fertility. I think we can still fertilize this for a bonus. I guess I'll put it on just to keep the production nice and high because I, I am set up for it. So we'll see. Is there hordes of orcs in this game? Actually, I don't believe there's orcs, um, generally speaking. Um, there are goblins, like goblin civilization, so they will come raid us. This looks pretty good. You still prefer the original? It's hard to tell right now. There's some things I miss from Classic. So, okay, it's it's twofold. The version we're playing now is version 5.0, like version 50. Um, the last freeware classic release was version 47, okay? They are going to be releasing the freeware versions alongside this. Pre they're calling this the premium version. I keep calling it the Steam edition, but it's not just on Steam. So the free version and the premium edition. And they're going to be, they're going to continue to release in sync. Um, the difference is that the free version isn't going to have this tile set or the music. And that's pretty much that. But um, bump Hey, thanks for the reset. So that's pretty much that. Um, the, uh, the free version is going to have the new user interface redesigned, but without the same graphics and things like that. Um, so there are some things I miss about playing on the previous version. Like, I have muscle memory for some of the old mechanics, and some of the things haven't been re-implemented in this new user interface, like the ability to, like, tweak ammunition of our squads um, isn't isn't in here currently. So you just have to trust the internal system to work more or less okay. Hey, Mobile, thanks for the, the brand new sub. Um, so, yeah, but that is surely going to come. And that's probably why there wasn't the free release alongside the Steam Edition here is because there's still some tweaking to be done um, for some of the tools. So I suspect that this new version going forward, which again, the free version and the premium version are going to have exactly the same stuff. Just the premium version gets all the pretty graphics and the, 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 the free one will get the default 
ASCII tile set, which is not actually an ASCII tile set, but of course there are free tile sets that modders have made that you can, you've been able to add into Dwarf Fortress for like 20 years now. So, um, so yeah, <clears throat> the biggest thing that I miss right now is just that DF hack hasn't been updated for the new version and DF hack has some really interesting features. Looks like someone is hunting. Someone is hunting an echidna. All right. We know the echidna are like freakishly tough because these are the things that the zombies had the hardest time killing for some reason. And I don't know why. No idea why. Is the free version on Steam? No, the free version is on the, the old Dwarf Fortress website. Mm -hmm. And I do recommend if you're playing the free version, download the Lazy New Pack. Um, and that installation there has a lot of quality of life tools from like third party modders and stuff built in, which is nice. You want Dwarf Therapist so bad. Yeah, Dwarf Therapist, pretty fun tool for managing your dwarves. But yeah, they are going to be updated. People are working on it. Okay, I would like to start a clothing industry because one of the ways that your dwarves do get bad thoughts... Hey, we have one less super cranky person. We had three, we're down to two. That's nice. Uh, one of the ways that your dwarves get bad thoughts is if they're, not, if they're you know, not wearing proper clothes. So I want to start producing that. And what I want to do is I want to make a new stockpile over here. That's not the stockpile button. This is stockpile pile. So I'm going to make a stockpile over here, which is going to be, um, it's the armor category. Armor is anything you wear. So if we looked, uh, not that button. If we looked under custom for armor, this includes um, like, yeah, coats, cloaks, dresses, etc. That's all armor. It's just, this is the clothing category. Um, so we want that in there, but we want to do something special with a stockpile. Rather than have take from anywhere, because if we have this turned on, this is a normal behavior for stockpiles. So if there was any clothes just lying around, dwarves could bring it to the stockpile. I don't want that. I want the stockpile to only take from our workshops. I guess we don't put it here, do we? Because this takes from another stockpile. What we instead want to do is link the workshop, I guess. So we have a clothier's workshop here, which we want to link to a stockpile. Choose a stockpile to which the workshop will give items. There we go. So our clothier's workshop over here, any items it produces, it will drop in this stockpile here. And we want to do the same thing probably with our leather works. Leatherwork can produce things other than this, though. How does that work? What happens if the Leatherworks creates a quiver? Presumably, it doesn't get brought over here. It probably just sits in here, and then the dwarf brings it to a generic stockpile. You can link workshops from the stockpile or stockpile from the workshop. Either works the same. Oh, if I... Oh, it says, says set from which workshops. So even though this tooltip says stockpile, presumably, hold on, let me cancel the Leatherworks. Uh, which one's the Leatherworks? This one down here. If I say and do that, okay. All right, it does work that way. This tooltip here, tooltip in the top right corner, um, implies that this is the take from stockpile, but there we go. I guess the, this counts as that. So I don't know what's going to happen to things like quivers. I'm assuming that the worker just drops them in the, the workshop itself and they get picked up and brought somewhere else, but I don't know. Yeah, I guess the workshop's sort of a stockpile. Or maybe the quivers are just going to accumulate over here, in which case we'll notice that at some point and we'll just, you know, we'll put a maybe a specialized quiver little spot. But for now, all new items of clothing are going to get brought over here. Now, dwarves that are wearing clothing and that gets too worn and they want to get rid of, we'll just throw it on the ground or whatever. And that has to be brought somewhere as well. Now, currently, our master stockpile over here, these four rooms are one giant stockpile, do allow armor. What I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this off. And instead, the refuse stockpile over here, I'm going to have it accept armor. And so my idea, which based on what I was reading, is that any discarded clothes will get brought to this refuse stockpile and rot away and not you know, sit around, um, just generating extra noise and garbage. Alternatively, instead of doing that, I could just leave it in the primary stockpile, and then when the merchant comes, just go and sell it. But we're going to try this and see what happens. 
Ooh, we're now hunting emu. Nice. Who's actually... I don't know who's actually shooting. It doesn't... It's not crediting anyone with firing the bolts. Would we see hunting in this list somewhere? Yeah, right here. Saxel is hunting. Here, let's give Saxel a name. You're doing funky things. Let's name you. D Stapler. D Stapler the Hunter. Okay. Hunting you, you. Hope it's not actually Australia, or the hunter might lose the war. That's a good point. Okay. So that's still going okay. Cool. Can hide the military dwarves for now. So things are being brought here. Armor bin. Yeah, see, some of this... Oh! Our metal workers workshop would also have to be tweaked to drop things... Hmm. In here, too. Because right now, all of our fancy armor is going up here. Okay, I'm going to change my mind. Because I'm worried that I'm going to have new stuff sitting over there and rotting. I'm going to go back to allowing all armor slash clothing in our primary stockpile. For now. Maybe I can sell from that. I'll, maybe in between streams I'll do another reading of that. But I don't want to accidentally put new stuff out there and have it rot. Because that would be bad. So some, at some point, these things are going to get brought back downstairs. No, I didn't want to view the stockpile. I wanted to view this bin. Oh, there's nothing in here yet. That would be why. Mm -hmm. The stockpiles are not linked currently. We can adjust the quality. Here's the thing. You can adjust the quality, but you can't adjust the wear, which is really annoying. So, um, for the armor, we can say, you know, just quality, how well it's crafted. But we can't filter based on wear. Uh, linking stockpiles makes it so that one stockpile takes from another. But that's not what I'm looking to do here. So one of the nice things in DF Hack that you can do when you're looking at your stocks or various things, you can filter by, like, the wear amount. So one thing we could do, for example, is... So if we look at the armor category... Um, so this steel mail shirt over here is, is really worn out. Um, although it might still be fine. But it's really worn out. That's what these X's are. Small X, big X, double X's over here. Um, and what you can do is you can tell them to dump. So you can designate an area as a garbage dump. And items that get dumped like this will get carried to the garbage dump. That garbage dump could include, like, magma. So you just throw things in magma and burn them away. Um, these items as well. This is a metal item. So I can actually melt this. If I toggle this on, I'm going to ask a dwarf to, to melt this down. Which happens in a smelter. So there's a task... I think it's in a smelter. Melt metal object. There we go. So if with this task up here, what's going to happen is there's a dwarf is going to look for a metal object that's been flagged to be melted and will melt it down over here, giving us some of the material back. So yeah, the steel ones, I do want to melt it down like that one. So we're going to we're going to melt down that chain shirt because it's really heavily worn. But there's not a really good way to automate that. Like I can put in a job for melt a metal object. But I don't think I can put, there's no magnifying glass. I don't think I can uh, have it automatically melt objects of a certain quality. What I can do is have it flag, like probably do this. Let's say I put in a job, melt metal object, melt designated item is at least one. So if there's... Uh, greater than zero. There you go. If there's something that I've designated to be smelted, go ahead and get it smelting. That's going to be fine. And I guess it's got to use coal for it as well. So make sure there's at least a piece of coal as well. There we go. So now that I've got that job in there, now when I go into the stocks and I ask for something to be melted down, it'll automatically get queued up and taken care of at some point, which is lovely. But there's no way for me to very quickly go and find something to melt down you know, set a filter or anything like that. You could with DF hack. It'd be very easy to just, just show me thing that's extremely worn and then 
Okay. Everything that you see on this window, flag it all to be mine. Or to be smelted down. Yeah, melt metal object. Is that what you're doing here, buddy? Yeah, you're melting a metal object. Which, if we check on the building... There you go. Steel mail shirt is here. It's currently being melted down. <laughs> Does it filter the axe like... Oops. Yeah, no. Because it doesn't... These little thingies on the right... On the sides of the item don't count as part of the name. So one X shows me bauxite, but that's it. Do you have another... Well, we just... Uh, we did just butcher a bunch of creatures and we're doing some more hunting. Um, so we could potentially start some, uh, archer armor. We can also put our archers in metal armor. There's no reason we can't. Oh, yeah, there's no win condition in here. There's ways to lose. But there's no way to win other than your personal goals. You tell your own story. I would like to build a road. Because it'll look cool and nice. Also, I want to put, um, quote unquote, road on the outside here so that uh, we can prevent trees from growing too close like this. Oh, yeah, we got to start our, our other layer of defenses, too. <laughs> Best way to win is not to play. Winning is wiping the elves out. Well, there you go. There's a win condition. Let's build a four tile wide, quote unquote, road. Is that under construction? I haven't actually built a road yet in this version. Paved road, dirt road. Okay, paved road. Uh, select material, yep. I do wish it gave you a visual indicator as you were moving your mouse. I don't think we'll have enough jet blocks to finish this. Actually, I'm not sure if we have enough jet stone lying around. What the hell's the jet in here? Do we not have any jet stone? Oh, yeah, we have four chunks of jet. That's it. Where are we remining jet? Was someone coming to steal one of our artifacts? Is that what this is? I think it might be. Here's some jet. Let's just go and put very low level priority mining of jet over here. I think that might have been what we were just seeing there. Oh, we're attacking that swordman. It's a goblin fighting the human swordman. Is there a goblin guest? Visitors come asking questions and to relax. She's seeking information about the location of Shank and Knife. And this goblin, visitors come, he's curious about the mechanical desert. Dessert, sorry. Okay, I don't know which one of these is necessarily enemy. I'm not going to issue a kill command, but I'm going to tell both of our military squads to come into this... Um, Come into this barracks. Yep, there you go. Yeah, they did go and kill the human. I think he was caught trying to steal a, a an artifact. Shanken knife right over here. Who made this? Does it not tell us who made it on the screen? That's annoying. Yeah. Freaking hell. All right, you can cancel your orders. I'm going to... There's some forbidden gear that was dropped from the combat over here. We're just going to unforbid that. Actually, there might be some sitting on the surface from some of our previous fighting, too. I'm going to big... Unforbid everything. Designation on the surface. 
Oh, what now? Uh, emu. Okay, that's more hunting. That's fine. Missed details log. Yeah, we're, hopefully the logging... I, a lot of this is an improvement. And very user-friendly. Like, for beginners, the qual classification stuff. But we do want access to the old, um, the old log system as well. It's going to be very nice. Look how many people are wandering the surface. I mean, they're probably collecting all kinds of random stuff from the surface. Well, especially with the mass on Forbid. See, everyone's storing items here. Yeah. Oh, resume construction. Now, overhang. There you go. Yeah, some of these got suspended. An easy way to see that is we can go into our task list over here. And we can see, yeah, there's a bunch of suspended building stuff. So we can go and unsuspend that. It'd be nice to have a bulk unsuspend button. So yeah, that ramp is ready to go. So now dwarves are coming along here. There we go. They're going to be constructing these little things. I guess maybe before I do the road, I should work on the fortifications. Okay, I do want to keep making blocks, or jet blocks. It looks cool. But what we need to do right now is I'm going to ask for, like, a, another round of 100 blocks. Which I think that's 100 boulders, so it's going to be 400 blocks out of whatever. Mudstone, anything, I don't really care. We just need to get some of these things set up as quickly as possible. We don't have a training schedule yet, and you're right. There are enough dwarves now. We probably could have them do that. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to put them both on the staggered training. So here, they train for three months, and they have three months off. And if we check the barracks here, I believe both squads are set to train there. And our archery, our rough bows are set to train over here. Good. Actually, maybe what I'll do is I'll keep the bows training on the surface. Oh, no, this is blocked in. Oh, it's not actually yet closed in. Let me... I missed a spot. Right there. There we go. I'm not worried about random creepy crawlies walking up through here anymore. So I'll have the training on the surface. It's going to help keep our military dwarves from becoming cave adapted and getting allergic to the sun. Which is going to be important because dwarves that spend too long underground when they go and are exposed to sunlight they'll just start like puking and vomiting from the sun uh and i can't blame them the sun is terrible sun is a deadly laser right um so but you don't really want your military to be like being sick while fighting can wooden walls outside keep nasty 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 monsters out some things do destroy things oh human caravan is here all right well we can trade with you um, ba -da 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 -da. So again, I would like, I would like this. So if I type finished, it'll only show me categories of bins that have a finished good bin in it. So this peach wood bin somewhere in here, there is a finished good bin in here, but it still shows me the entire category that, that clearly needs to be adjusted. Um, in practice, what I'll probably do for our bins is I'm just going to sort by value and then grab I'm, I'm okay with gem bins as well. So finished goods, you know, just looking at the higher value ones over here. Same thing, finished goods, finished goods. If we have anything with gems, I can sell those as well. There we go, gem bins, because these are cut gems. I want to save some for the dwarven caravans. But we'll see. I mean, most likely we have too much value here for any, uh, all the stuff the humans are bringing. But we may as well move all those. Okay. And then the other thing I could do is I could go over. Um, I could do armor bins as well. And then sell the um, rotten cloth from that. Spyglass. This, just, this just sets the focus to the search window. Yeah, it doesn't actually change the filter. All it does is it chooses whether the cursor is active or not. It's the same as cl clicking in here. This here is whether it blocks things that are banned by a mandate, and here we can sort by distance or value. As it very conveniently here, only alder bins have armor in them. As as pure coincidence in this case. But yeah, I think I think that's we can classify this mostly as just a bug more than anything else. So I just won't bother right now. We'll just move the finished goods and the gems over here, and that'll be okay. Yeah, I, I, I'm qualifying that la the way the filter is working currently as, as a bug. It's filtering the entire category of things. Okay, merchants arrived. We've got some diplomacy here with the humans. Um, I believe in, um, prior to this version, humans and 
humans, I don't think, traded with dwarves. Um, I don't know if they traded in four, in version 4.7. I know they did with the F-Hack, but that was one of the options um, for advanced trade. Is there anything specific we'd like to request? Again, generically requesting leather would be pretty nice. In this case, I don't know, apparently echidna are pretty tough, so we'll just ask for some echidna leather. Um, and if you can make sure to bring some iron anvils, I wouldn't mind. We only have the one right now. They're, so they'd pay more for seeds. I wish when these traders came, they would remind us what they're paying a premium for this year. So next year when the humans come, they're going to be willing to pay more for seeds, but I won't be reminded of that unless we make some notes. So it'd be nice to have that. So we'll request um, that esoteric fish make their way over to the depot soon. Everything that was supposed to be moved here has been moved. One, and that is a nice thing in this version. It gives you a count of how many things haven't been moved yet. That was not in the previous version of Dwarf Fortress. That's really nice. Humans traded with dwarves. They just didn't do diplomacy. Mm. Oh, the fix of sort of diplomacy. Oh, so we didn't get the um, the pop-up conversation. I see. I, say, I thought I got humans and elves visiting in vanilla, but I don't know. Attempt to trade. Okay. Wasn't sure if they'd unpack. I got, I've got the thing set up for like pop-ups for when the merchants arrive and when the merchants will be leaving soon as like a last minute warning. But I, I couldn't find an alert for the humans have finished unpacking and are ready to trade. So first let's figure out if there's anything we actually want from these guys. It's not a bad idea by rope. Use the ropes for a few different things and then you don't have to worry about a cloth industry to like support it. I think these are instruments. Also, I'll buy a cheap flask here for our military. Uh, oh, these are re wickedly expensive. Never mind. I'm not going to buy those. If they have pigs, I'd buy them. Sewer Brew is a terrible name. But, you know, dwarves I don't think are too picky for alcohol. Oh, why? It's 4,000. Oh, they brought a lot of booze. Well, uh, okay, some of this is not booze. Wine, whiskey, wine, wine, beer, wine, wine river spirits okay we'll get that I guess we could buy the lie might have skipped some in there wow they got a lot of booze yeah we can buy lie just to make our soap making industry a little bit easier random buckets are always good random little weapons are okay we're not gonna buy a bow but a crossbow is fine Two, big two-handed hammer okay uh, humans sell large clothing which dwarves can't wear I don't care about alfalfa seeds. Although I could buy it this year and sell it to them next year. Might make a profit. There you go. Leather. And cloth. Ooh, that's... Yeah, we're paying a premium for that bin here. A lot of times I just buy the bin because it saves hauling time. But that way the bin was too expensive. There you go. Leather. And cloth I generally want to build. Now, I'm assuming... Let me just put a pause in here. Uh... Wow, this these sapphires are worth a thousand? These are really well cut sapphires right here. Now some of these bins might actually have the artifact in it. Which is why that one's probably worth 3500 bucks. Yeah, so there's an artifact in this bin. What I would love to do, and with DF hack you could do, is you could filter for the word mug. So now if I sell this whole bin, it'll send that artifact. And what's annoying is let's say I click on this whole bin and then do this. It cancels the whole bin. I would like it to like be able to invert. Like select the whole bin, but deselect the artifact. I don't mind selling an artifact. You can sell it for money. Oh yeah, that's right. Do a lot of small trades rather than a big one so you can trade. Yeah, Ugh, maybe I should have done that. Let me let me keep going with selection as is, but I won't select anything else. Just because I don't want to have to redo it. Okay, this bin's th figured at 2,000, but it's probably legit just mugs. See, I hate having to kind of micro and watch all this. Oh, that is a valuable gem bin here. Let me just throw in enough bins. I want the trader to turn a profit so that they'll accept. Okay, let me try this. Excellent. Oh, no, counter offer. Okay, I will say okay. Let's cut down a little bit here. You run into a lot of profit. You want to double. Okay. 
Now let's let's see about making some more little micro micro deals, like one bin at a time. It's just a bunch of loose loose cloth, not in a bin. I didn't know they did that. Okay. I'm going to click until it at least turns yellow. Because right now it's orange. Now it's yellow. Here, let me throw in the 300. It's not green. They definitely accepted it green. Okay. Ecstatic. Yeah, I bet. So apparently this is a good way to train. Okay. Um, we might want some writing things later. Let's get a little cheese. I don't know. I love cheese, so dwarves must too, right? There we go. Green. He'll definitely be happy with that, but that's fine. Um, as I say, you've got more leather and cloth bins. I search for... There you go. Leather bin. For this. Trade. All right. See, leather B is showing this cloth bin. I don't. I want the cloth too, so I guess that's kind of okay. Wow, some of these gems are really worth a lot. Well, that's rough. That's not even cut. Trade. Oh right, this is the bin where the bin itself is worth a ridiculous amount for some reason. I like that we're getting a bunch of leather. So yeah. I know this is a little bit slow. Maybe not great stream content, but... It's going to be very, very useful for us. Especially if this is training up our trade skill. And yeah, if this is happening on the fly, like we might be getting like better and better deals along the way. That's another ridiculously expensive bin here. What the hell? No, 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 is the, um, is the, the wealth value of our fortress, oh, you know what, I can just trade them one of, like, the thousand GP gems here, uh, unmark all, is the wealth of the fortress, or is it created wealth that determines the size of raid, the size of raids, is this just really the value of the bin, okay, I guess this is actually legit, because the price of the cloth, all right, Here, have one shiny rock and a little bit extra. Oh, yarn cloth for Imtar in the other game. Yeah, that's a good point. We'll check. Um, actually, I guess I could check the stats now. Hold on. Okay, trade. If I close this, our broker, oh, stay paused a sec, is Esoteric Fish. I should have checked the stats beforehand. We can still do a little bit of that. Esoteric Fish is a competent appraiser. Oh, social. He's a great persuader. He might have already had some of these. But we could check to see how things look afterwards. Oh, now we're seeing our own our own goods in here, which... What? No. Cancel. That is really annoying when <coughs> the focus isn't set right. See, like... What's going on here? That's weird. Yeah, this, I don't know. The search is wonky. Very wonky. 
It'll be by the anvil. So I don't know. Let's, uh, so yeah, let's just try to finish this now by category. I think we did buy the anvils from the first go. We could go and buy more of these barrels. Oh, right, that's large. I can't wear these. No, 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 no. I don't think I'm interested in these bags. And then, yeah, these are bins of stuff, including bins we've sold them. Cloth. We need the ring. I guess we didn't get the anvils. Let me grab all these. We really don't need food. More tanned hides. Random thread, including yarn. Quiver. A couple more crutches for the hospital. I mean, we can build those, but what the heck, right? Um, I think we're going to want a library. So why don't I buy these scrolls and codices? Um, they're not cheap, but we still have lots of stuff to trade. Waiting for this to turn yellow. There you go. Let me throw in just a little bit more now that it's yellow. Trade? Cool. Seems a stat, yeah. I mean, they're going to be very happy with this. They're turning a huge profit. But it does, you know... Well, it's more important with the dwarves. Because the dwarven merchants, them being profitable, it leads to more migrants. Although we're okay with migrants now. Alright, I'm going to say no traders needed. We're going to the human trade. Call that good. Okay. Excellent stuff. Okay, so we'd set up uh, earlier, we'd set up this little stockpile for new clothing, but I hadn't actually set up work orders for the clothing. So let's get that now. Um, I believe the minimum is they need something that covers their top, their pants, and I think socks are very important to the dwarves as well. Um, I believe robes uh, are like count as a shirt. I mean, you can make shirts and things, but robes are like more covering. So I think like robes, are they called trousers? Trousers and socks now dwarven clothing deteriorates over time um there's a bunch of different ways that we could set this up uh what i'm just gonna say is if we have fewer maybe if we have fewer than five we'll make five which means we'll have somewhere between five to ten stored up in any given points socks are the dead of this clothing that is true um now this will count the stuff that's worn and unattractive. Which is a little bit annoying, but. So if we have less than five, make five. So that we have between five and ten just sitting around ready to go. And I think that's that's fine. And socks, you do make them in pairs. So I think in this case, the, the make sock cloth sock five will actually make ten. So again, we'll keep ten individual socks around. So I don't have to change that number. Okay. So presumably this will help keep our dwarves dressed and happy. Imagine a massively multiplayer version of DF where every trade was the goods produced by another player for it. The price varied according to supply and demand. Yeah, it sounds like EVE Online, but, you know, not in space. Oh, they're sparring. Okay. Yeah, the uh, alert system, I don't think I've got a way to separate out the sparring from the real combat. So yeah, these are, like, lightly tapping. You can sometimes get injuries while sparring, but not too bad. Imagine the FPS death. Yeah, I'm pretty sure socks, gloves, and mittens get made in pairs. So a single job makes two. I don't think they have a right and left hand in this, though. Uh, the additional pop-ups, Jibber, if you do a what game, you'll get a link to my modified announcement file. Oh, there's a boulder stuck here. Interesting. Let me complete this job, even though there's a boulder in the way. You can smooth these boulders to get rid of them. 
I think with the old way of constructing the roads, uh, previous to this version, this would have actually stopped us from placing a road there because of the way the designation would work. But now it lets us do it, which is handy. See, this tree here is actually a problem because it could theoretically... Oh, is it right now just a single stump? It's not branching out? That's odd. But it could give ways for people to jump over our walls and do annoying things. Okay, let's build more road over here. I want to buffer around my base. So roads... Um, are cheaper to build than floors. The difference between a road and a floor, a floor can be self-supporting. Like on our second story over here, we have a floor that overhangs. You can't do that with the road. A road has to be on an existing surface, but takes less material. And we're using it here just to stop trees from growing right around along our walls. We'll go from here to one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And, uh, okay, good. We've got enough jet blocks to do that. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, let's check the uh, the bedrooms. So we, we had put that on pause for a little while because we're waiting for some beds to be constructed. So first of all, Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I queued up enough beds so that we could have eight in this wonky dormitory. And enough here and enough for another section of bedrooms. I don't think I'm, I'm going to rush the other section of bedrooms. We have enough bedrooms here for 40 dwarves. Some of them are paired up. Um, and then some of them might be might have to use the dormitory. That's okay. Uh, the extra beds that I probably have kicking around right now. Yeah, there we go. We're going to go and put in here in the inn. We'll get that sorted out in just a second. Um, build doors, door. Boom, 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 boom. Okay, and then we'll do some smoothing here shortly. But if I go, what's our what's our in called? Oh yeah, mechanical dessert. Mmm, delicious. So what we do if we make bedrooms over here? Now I will have to click on each individual one here, but I can assign it to the mechanical dessert and these are now going to be rentable rooms so our tavern is now an inn there we are so guests can stick around longer and increase the chance they're willing to join our fortress plus it's cool that's how you do that yeah it is slightly different from how it uh, worked previously, but eh, fairly similar. Yeah, you zone them as bedrooms and then assign them to the to the inn location. All right. Uh, you know what? I will put some smoothing jobs down. Starting with over here. I should probably smooth these temples too. But let's smooth out the bedroom area. I got priority set to seven, which is fine. Low priority, but we don't have anything else going on right now, so the smoothing should happen fairly quickly. Okay. Drinks is more than good. It went up because we did buy some, some human drinks. You know, obviously dwarven drinks are superior, but people like variety. Nothing wrong with that. If you only drink the best scotch every day, how will you ever be able to know that it's the best? Unless sometimes you have something that's less good, right? Can your petition, petition guests join your military be noble? Um, I, so I don't know. There's... So there's a slight difference between a permanent resident and a citizen. Guests petition to become permanent residents, um, but I don't think they can assign to all jobs in all the same way. So I'm not entirely sure. How's jet mining going? Um, this area here is done. We've got plenty of jet blocks coming around. We got another migrant wave. So let's count. We were, what, 51, right? Maybe just another 10 this time. There we go. Do you need a tavern and a dining hall? Well, you don't need either, but I do have both. Um, the tavern and dining hall actually overlap, so they share the same space. If I click here. Um, oh, yeah. Next. No, no overlapping zone. Merchants are leaving soon, so if I'd forgotten for trade, I would have done it. There you go. This highlight area, this is my dining room. And then the other green area around here is the tavern. So they overlap, which you get a little, it's it's in red. It lets you know. I think they they get 
a slight debuff to their value from overlapping, but it's much more convenient. Plus, then when you put something fancy in it, it counts for both, which is great. Some dwarf dropped some food in their bedroom and is generating some miasma. It's it withered plump, plump helmets over here. Dwarves are filthy, filthy, filthy creatures. So migrants are buses. You wait a year without seeing any, then one turns into a giant elk and kills you. That sounds about right, Grumpy. Yep. Where creatures are serious business. Vampires? Man, I'm totally cool with vampires in my fort. They're not a problem, really. Every now and again, they kill a dwarf. Eh, it happens. Where creatures are a whole other thing, though. Mostly because vampires don't really make other vampires. It's actually very difficult to turn a dwarf into a vampire. But where creatures constantly turn dwarves into more where creatures. Huge problem. Your nobles need anything? I don't think we've got... Oh, sorry, I'm wrong about that. Four-star flood. Yes! Uh, that's right. I haven't actually taken a look at this since our colony has grown. Four-star flood. So Esoteric Fish was, until just now, our expedition leader. However, now things have grown enough that we don't just have an expedition leader. We have a mayor, which was elected to be Four-star flood. And our mayor does need um, certain things. So they're going to need fancier rooms and some extra resources. So we got to make our first nobility room. Where are we going to put our noble rooms? Should it be part of our living quarters floor? I think so. Or we put it just one level deeper. Maybe we put our... our hmm... Or other side from the tavern. They could be behind here. They could. We could keep expanding sort of sideways. I kind of want to keep all the living stuff on one floor. There's, it's actually much more efficient to have everything centered on your main staircase and really build vertically. But I think I want it on this floor. What I might do is make a block, like kind of reserve an area over here for noble bedrooms. Oh, they have a mandate too. Oh, they do. Oh, a mandate to not export large gems. Okay. <laughs> so they just turned into a mayor and just started this because that's actually really annoying. Now we can't sell gems. Large gems is cut gems, which was a big part of our value in the last trade. Four star flood must specifically love gems. Uh, should this mayor have an accident? Uh, preferences. Yep, large gems. Son of a bitch. Sometimes he'll ask for them to be produced, which is totally fine. And sometimes he'll ask for them not to be sold, which sucks. Closest thing we have to a hero. I mean, he created an artifact. Is he in one of our military squared squads? Oh, we can fill this squad in. Yeah, he's one of our archers. <sighs> New mayor ran and promised to no longer trade away shiny rocks I've seen last trade. Well, you know what? We're going to roleplay it. We're going to make a vault, and we're going to store all of our large gems in that vault. That's what we're going to do. We're just going to hide them away. You... Hold on. You can encrust finished goods with cut gems. And then presumably, if you trade away those finished goods, that does not count as trading away cut gems. I think what we do is we start encrusting our finished goods with cut gems and then we're gonna sell like just supremely expensive mugs instead yeah maybe that's what it is you know what the mayor was just looking at we can do better we can do better why are we selling these gems as is when instead we we have a central tenant we sell mugs we pay the mug price how dare we sell just gems this goes against everything we believe in no instead we will just sell shinier mugs Four star, how could I ever doubt you?
I'm sorry, I just clearly didn't listen to your political speeches correctly. Awesome. So, I'm going to put in a job to encrust finished goods with cut gems. We're going to make sure... Amount of gem cut gems. Yeah, the yearly coins is pretty fun too. Gem cut gems. How odd. What I was thinking of doing is keeping some cut gems around unimproved in case we need it for a strange mood. Hopefully this is this is set okay. It's not a... Oops. Yeah, if I just make a, a custom... Con no, that's not what I want. There you go. Gem cut gems, amount of cut gems. You know what I'm thinking? Um, polished stones might count as a type of gem, as well as glass. That's what it is. Um, you can make glass and stone gems. This gem cut gems makes sure they're actual, lar like actual gem gems, what we think of a gem, as opposed to cut glass or stone. That's what this is. If we go adjective and look at gem, I hate that right clicking out of that menu brings you here. Material. Yeah, whatever. It must be. It must be an adjective. But I wonder what it is. Glass. Yeah, it almost must be an adjective, but I don't know what it is. Anyway, I'm going to assume that. Um, this This is accurate. I might want to change the batch size. You know, I'm going to change the batch size to five per day at a max. We'll keep 10 of these around and make sure there's five improvable things. There you go. So as long as there's at least 10 gems, you can use up to five of them to improve this. And right now we've sold a lot of our gems away, so we don't have any. Well, let's double check on that in our stocks. If we take a look at our cut gems, It certainly looks to me like we have lots of cut gems sitting around. Oh, currently it's in the trade depot. Maybe that's not counted as accessible because if we look at the job, right now it doesn't want to run because it doesn't think we have enough gems. Maybe it's because it's in the trade depot as opposed to a proper stockpile. We'll give it a chance for some things to be moved and we'll take a look. Gem cut gem in the holograms. Yes, dust light. It's outrageous. It's truly, truly outrageous. Why are we selling gems not giving the Essentia Modica? It's true, Essentia Modica does have um, the essence of crow in her. She does like shiny things. Not as much into like, I think Essentia, I think it's fair to say you're not as much into like, like, you know, diamond jewelry or things like that. I mean, you'd like to wear like rings, but it's mostly about like the metals and things like that. Um, but you like crystals. Like, give her a big bowl of, like, cool crystals. And I think that she'd be into that. Yeah, a little like a magpie. Yeah, okay, maybe, yeah. Uh, okay, that's just... That will be a little bit annoying with the, um... Uh, with the sparring. In previous versions of War Fortress, you would get separate categories between combat reports and, um, sparring reports. Can't the mayor just inspect the drawbridge? Absolutely, we could do that. If we decided this mayor was no good for us, he could stand underneath the drawbridge for reasons. Splat. Oh, there you go. Increase finished gem goods with cut gems has started. So I'm assuming we probably unpacked some gems. 
Yeah, there you go. Now it's satisfied. So yeah, I'm betting people unpacked the gems from the trade depot, brought them back to a stockpile, and that activated this job. Now, finished goods will be all types of finished goods. I don't remember. Yeah, I can specify what gems to use and what type of like cuttings and decorations. I cannot, to the best of my knowledge, specify the type of finished goods. So this will include things that are not mugs, but that's the way it's going to go. Finished goods like saunas? <laughs> and some nice vodka as well. Question about hospitals. I just learned today the diagnostician cannot be the same dwarf as the head doctor because the head doctor also serves as... So that's a great question, Glenn. And unfortunately, I don't know the answer to that yet. Um, that is different in this game. So in version in version 5.0 or version 50 of Dwarf Fortress, i.e. the Steam version that we're playing on, hospitals have changed where now you assign these roles over here, which apparently we haven't done yet. Um, and it's weird because it used to be the hospitals didn't have those roles that would assign to them. In our noble screen, we would assign a chief medical dwarf. They would be responsible for people doing, um, for doing the diagnostic. And then any dwarf who had medical labors enabled will take care of the actual work, which might be the same dwarf or it might be someone else or something like that. But now we've got these, these roles, these positions instead. And I don't know. So, I mean, I can put Glundar, chief medical dwarf, as the diagnostician. But yeah, if I put them as a doctor, then it moves them from being a diagnostician to a doctor. Now, none of my current dwarves have any skill. Oh, actually, uh, Aerith is a talented surgeon, which is putting them at the top of the list for being a doctor. Although there's also a surgeon category, which makes me think Aerith should go in there. So I don't know what people do for these different roles. And we got a herbalist. Herbalist makes sense as a doctor, right? Sure, maybe. We got a bone doctor role that can be filled as well. So I'll just grab some random things. Let's, uh, uh maybe no, no one who's in the military. Here, a peasant. They don't have any particular skills. Congratulations. You now have your, your doctoring degree. So I have no idea how the new, the new hospital system and these allocations actually work and what kind of optimizations we can do and how important it is to have every role filled. You can also switch it as a dwarf needs work. You can have like one skilled doctor, put him as diagnostician. Once that's done, t turn this guy to be into a doctor instead. Once that's done, make them into a surgeon or whatever. Ugh, sounds terrible. So I, I don't even know if you need these roles filled or not, or if miscellaneous dwarves will still do it. Waiting for kind of people to figure that, this out and for the wiki to get updated. People are going to have to test things and see. I don't know. Uh, skill rest does still, still seem to be a thing, yeah. Uh, we do need some soap for the hospital. Um, we have we have our ash tree set up. We need a soap maker. So let's get a soap maker. We got another room here for the uh, for another workshop. We'll clearly have to dig some more work spa workshop space out soon. But let's put down workshop soap maker. Use closest material is fine. Oh no, wait, it's not fine. I lied. I want you to be made out of jet because it looks super cool. Oh yeah, you need a bucket and jet block. Excellent. Okay, so to make soap. So, to make soap, we can make it out of oil, which you can get from using a screw press on your nuts. Or uh, tallow, which you get from fat from the kitchen shop, which is usually all I do. So, soap from tallow. We also, so if we take a look at the requirements for this, um, lye containing items and fatty globs. So, fatty globs, this is going to be our tallow. And lye containing items is a bucket of lye. So we're gonna do we're gonna do one soap bar at a time here. So I'm just gonna set this to uh, as long as we have greater than zero lye and greater than zero tallow, we're gonna be in there. So that's gonna be in there, and then uh, we can set a maximum. So let's say we want no more than ten bars of soap. Well, by default, it's bars over here. This includes metal bars, coal bars, all those things. So we need to go into the adjective, not material, because if we go into material and look for soap, we get all the different soaps. We don't care about that. We need to go into adjectives for soap item. So now it's soap bars. So now if we have fewer than 10 bars of soap and we've got at least one bucket of lye and one tallow, then you can go ahead and make, make one soap. And this will happen every day. We don't need to make soap very quickly. 
We'll just bring in a little bit of a trickle. That's going to be fine. Now, tallow should get made in the kitchen. We're going to take a look at that in a second. But we also need lye production. So, lye is going to be a new job. This gets made at the ashery. Again, we'll do the same thing where we make sort of just one per day. And we'll say, for lye, we don't need a lot of lye kicking around. We want a little bit as a buffer. Let's say, um, if we have less than five lye, then do it. To make lye, we need ash. So we're gonna make one of these per day. So if we have one ash and one empty bucket, then attempt to make some lye, assuming we've got less than five. Right now, apparently we have no empty buckets. We're gonna have to put in a job for that. Uh, no time like the present. Do I not have a bucket job? Apparently I do not. Well, we're gonna want buckets for all kinds of different things. So let's put in a job to make wooden buckets. Um, let's make five at a time and I mean, hmm. and five. So this will keep between five to 10 empty buckets around. That's going to be okay. And make sure we've got at least five. Actually make sure we got at least 10 logs. If we have less than 10 logs, do not prioritize buckets. Okay. So that'll be that sorted. Um, what else do we need for lye? We need ash. So we need an automated thing to make sure we've got a little bit of ash around. So same thing. I'll just set it to make just, just one per day. And maybe the same sort of thing where if we have less than five ash, then do that. But again, maybe I'll wait until we make sure you got 10 or more logs. Making ash is not a huge thing to rush. So make sure we got a good buffer of logs. If you've got it, attempt to make one ash. That should be our soap industry sorted. Assuming we have a kitchen that is processing fat. And hopefully we have, because otherwise we've wasted a lot of fat here. Okay, good. We do have a kitchen. Every time we butcher an animal and we get some fat out of them, it will automatically queue up. Standing order, automate kitchen. It will automatically render the fat into tallow for us. So we should have a bunch of tallow sitting around. So now all of a sudden we should have an automated soap industry and that soap, some of it will get put into the hospital, which is gonna be great stuff. Okay. I can't remember if there was something else I was about to automate too. Or take care of next, can't remember. Is fat disallowed from being cooked? That's a great question. The answer is probably no. So kitchen. Uh, I don't see tallow in here. It should be under this category. Oh, there it is. No, so tallow is cookable. And oh, there's no way to just make tallow as a whole. I think that's something I was used to automate with the F hack to block all tallow all the time. Although we've got lots of it. I won't worry about everything, but yeah, we'll mostly try to keep the tallow around for our soap industry, because why not? <clears throat> yeah, it's all separate. We get so much tallow, like we got 74 just from the horse. That's gonna be lots. That's gonna be more than we ever need for any soap. And then I disallowed a couple others. So I'm not going to worry about the rest of it. Most of it can be used for cooking. That rendered fat is wonderful for making nice crunchy potatoes. Crisp roast potatoes. <laughs> Militia Captain bites the hammer dwarf in the upper leg. That's the kind of combat we want. Biting is one of the military skills our dwarves can have. If we click on a random dwarf, go to skills, combat. Oh, it doesn't actually, it doesn't even show like level zeros. That's too bad. But yeah, presumably we've some more dwarves returning to like novice biters. Echidna tallow is honestly not something I've ever thought of before. <laughs> and and we can make echidna soap out of it. Yes, how how odd. This is made out of oh, they just make out of microcline. That's what I thought. Microcline is another great rock to make out everything out of. It gives everything a blue hue. It's not useful for anything. Just like jet. Jet's not useful for anything. But it looks great. Oh, a hunter is bashing an echidna. I guess they had to close range. Yeah, all the practice. No, it does not matter what the soap is made out of. Um, I know that back in the day when I was playing with like the Masterwork mod, um, one of the things that it did is it actually changed a lot of the material to no longer be specific. Instead of having you know, horse leather, echidna leather, 
you know, et cetera, et cetera. Um, they just made it into generic leather, which made it easier to stack um, and reduced FPS requirements and things like that made the game run smoother. Uh, and I suspect that you'd probably see the same thing with Tallow. One could do that in the, um, in the Raws, but Dwarf Fortress by default has all the details all the time for everything. Again, this is a game where like your your people can have like tears in their eyes which are wiped away by their eyelids, which are all body parts that are tracked. Rimtar, a new Rimtar, Rimtar Torch Trotted, wants to hang out to entertain citizens. So they're gonna be acting as I think like a bard or a poet or something in our tavern. That's okay. Mast work in several types of leather, but yeah. Did they combine like maybe all like the birds into bird leather? Or stuff like that, maybe. It may have been something like that. This partially built road looks kind of funky. Throwing someone by the left to middle toe. Yeah, I mean, every body part from your left eyelid to your right pinky toe is simulated in Dwarf Fortress. You can't see the body parts um, in this version of it unless they have an injury to it. But yeah, you can get these details. And like layers of it, right? Like the layer of fat, which is just under the skin of your pinky, is all in there. All right, a little bit more roading done. I might come back and smooth these little boulders afterwards and road on top of it. But I don't know. I mean, I don't mind the little boulders there. It's not the end of the world. You know what I'm just realizing? I'm wondering if... Because this is jet. It doesn't look particularly black. I'm wondering if the roads only have one color, so it doesn't matter what boulder I use for them. I don't know. Not ramp. Road. The other R word. Paved road. Uh, you're going to do that, huh? Uh, that is slightly annoying. Keep using jet for that. Oh, this, this tree regrew. I'm gonna chop down that one at the same time while we're at it. There's an upward slope next to our wall over here. Could have made it really easy to climb. Can we do that? I don't know. You know what? While I'm at it, smooth that boulder out. Smooth that one as well. I will go and patch that. Smooth that. Remove this little random ramp, which will block our roads later on. That's going to be okay. Moment when you watch Quill YouTube video. Oh, we got a baby. And click on his Twitch streams. And you're welcome by. Hey, guys, it's Quill Keith. I know, but you missed it. Whoa, we got another artifact. It is four. We're going to be throwing this uh, stream over to Kiss for Luck in a moment. But let's let this artifact finish first. Also, ah, Edoc Ragbrave wants to join us for the purpose of eradicating monsters. Oh, that's right. Kiss for Luck is doing a multiplayer Fallout 76 today. Man, that power armor looks cool. Should play it again. I should at least log in and see if I got any rewards waiting for me. A Leatherworks Nish. Hold on, we're gonna rename Nish right away too. Nish, 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 Nish. Right here, strange mood. Rename. Where's my Twitch page? Juna. I don't know if you're in chat today. You're usually around. Juna, welcome, and I'm very excited for whatever your artifact may be. I don't think artifacts ever wear down so presumably if someone made like an artifact leather armor i think it would be wearable forever does anyone know i think that might be the case is there a way to drain fill the lake safely oh there's lots of different ways oh you know what i should do is i should put a little wall up here I forgot the braid's been over for a while or um what do we want wall great no Floodgate.
Reconnected levers. Yeah, allows the passage of fluid and items. Wait, how do we... Where's the floodgate? Oh, it's probably in the machines. There it is. Different category. Okay. Oh, I probably have to get rid of the little slope here to build this. There we go. Get rid of that as well. So we'll just put it there, and then later on we can hook it up to a lever and do funky things with it. Game keep, yes, the game keeps track of everyone's teeth, yeah. Tectonic plate diamond X. I mean, that's during world creation, but yeah. There's some nutty things this game does. Absolutely nutty things. Just got here. Why is some of the map 2D and some of it isometric? Um, it's, it's all 2D, but they, they've got this little effect here to try to showcase that there's like a ramp. I mean, it does have like kind of this ghost view. As I, as I go up here, it fades out the background. But you can see more than one level at a time. But yeah, um, ramp terrain. They have it, have it looking a little isometric to show. So Junus created... Oh, okay. A leather shield. Now leather, I don't know actually if how much material interacts with shields, but this sounds fairly useful. A grizzly bear leather shield. All right, let's take a look at that bad boy. So its dwarven name is a mugnusher, which means fog waddles. I like to think that fog waddles was the name of the grizzly bear this is made out of. This is a grizzly bear leather shield. A craft warship is the highest quality is encircled bands of grizzly bear leather. Well, that is boring as hell. Here's the thing. So the last artifact we had was an earring and it had like a ginormous amount of text and sub descriptions and things and was made up of like six different components. And this one here is like, it's a whole shield made out of leather with some more leather. It's not, come on, come on, Juna. Could have done that better, right? Mirroring was about two meters long. Yeah, it was a is an earring that the dwarf would wear, and it would drag on the the floor behind them. I think that's the most reasonable explanation. Still, that might mean Juna is a legendary um, leather worker, though. Oh no, it's a different type of strange mood. I was possessed. Yeah, they need to get a fey mood for them to actually get legendary afterwards. So not only was it kind of a crappy, ooh, intruders. Not only was it kind of a crappy artifact, but we didn't get any real value out of it. Okay, so we spotted some sort of intruder over here. They probably got scared off. Oh, snatchers, there we go. Right here, goblin thief, goblin thief. And if it says snatcher, these specifically, I think they want to steal away some of the children. Now, once they get spotted, I think they generally run away. No, they're still moving forward. That's interesting. Not usually when they get spotted, they decide to run. Well, they're about to run into my military, which are sitting here training. Yeah, <laughs> there they go. Flee, flee. Uh, one thing that I am missing from this version of Dwarf Fortress is the ability to advance one one frame at a time. Um, I, I'm 100% sure they will be returning that here. But in the uh, in the the previous version, um, you could hit the the the, the dot, the period key to advance one frame at a time. It would be great for these combat scenes. There you go. It's God square them away, scared them away and are just come back over here. Uh, ooh, the recruit bites the goblin thief in the right eye, tearing it through the leopard leather cloak. The force twists the head. I'm sorry. Did, did you maybe kill? No, this one's still healthy. What about the other one? It might not have died. It might have escaped. Oh, they're still lingering around. Hold on. Let's put an actual kill command here. Crimson dies. Go and kill that over there. I mean, and you can bite him in the eye if you want to. Oh, I think they just left the map. I might hit station as well. It just disappeared, so I assume they just left the map. Oh, yeah. Who... Ooh, becoming attached to their weapons. Okay, that's fine. Um, okay, those are the sparring, sparring messages. I wonder if I can fill these out.
Do we know who did the biting? See, people are spreading words about our wonders. Yeah, and that's how they're they're trying to steal things. Okay. Um, so down at the bottom is the most recent. I wonder if it was Corthos. Yeah, there you go. It was Corthos. Corthos did the biting. I wonder if I can... There's a limited amount of uh, space for the nicknames, but... You're going to be renamed to Corthos Eyebiter. There we go. Corthos Eyebiter. <laughs> Tyke Meissen. That would be a great name for a dwarf. That You're 100% right about that. Uh, oh, we need more silver. Where's our tetrahedrite? That's a question that is not easy for me to answer. I want to mine out more tetrahedrite. What does Cassetterite have? Tell you what, I'm going to put a, a low priority auto mine on that. Oh, you're also doing the Kelenite. I really don't need the Kelenite. There you go. Shirt Kelenite. Magnetite. That's more iron ore, which I don't really need right now. Hematite, which we might want later. Um, you can use macros without the keyboard controls, but they're not going to be as useful. It might have been closer to the surface. A bunch more jet down here. <gasps> Tetrahedrite. There we go. Okay, so for... Oh, again. Gypsum. <sighs> Gypsum counts as one of the veinable things, which is really annoying. So, tetrahedrite has got the silver texture. Is that some over here? Yep, good. Which I guess makes sense, because it's got silver. It's copper and silver. What's this blue stuff? Okay, that's microcline. If I do that. See, the microcline is not a veinable thing, so it won't do that. Limonite, that's iron. Hematite, iron. Tetrahedrite. Thank you. And it wouldn't surprise me if the areas above and below here, ooh, quartz, I don't know, we'll do that, had some. So what I'm going to do is, um, this cavern level, so around level 20, I'm assuming we might find more tetrahedrite here because it's in the same stone layer. I don't need a ton, but I need enough to finish our silver war hammers. Okay, I think we're going to wrap it up here. Our next live stream is on Saturday. We're coming back with RimWorld. Next Monday... Yes, mon next Monday is the 19th. We will be back with more RimWorld for Mining Monday. After that, things get kind of weird because we're going to the holiday schedules. So next Wednesday is the 21st. It's going to be Solstice. Actually, is Solstice on the 21st this year? Yes, it's on the 21st. Okay. I was like, hold on. Had we actually double-checked that? Do, do, do. Yeah, sorry. So, RimWorld Saturday, Dwarf Fortress Monday the 19th. The 21st, next Wednesday, no stream. Instead, I will be streaming next week on the 22nd and 23rd, um, is currently the intention. And then after that, I don't think we're going to have another live stream until after the new year. Um, because uh, Saturday the 24th is Christmas Eve. So a lot of people are going to be busy that day. So I am i don't think I'll stream that day. That's why I'm doing the 22nd, 23rd instead. Um, and then after that, I'm going to be gone for the better part of the week at my parents' house. Um, and then after that is New Year's Eve. So 19th, 22nd, I'm going to post on Twitter in the Discord. But 19th, 22nd, 23rd, and then probably the 2nd of January is going to be the next stream. So there's going to be, there's going to be some weird stuff. But for now, the important thing to know Saturday, as typical, this Saturday, RimWorld. Next Monday, Dwarf Fortress. After that, stay tuned for some updates. Um, oh, remember the floodgate? Thank you very much. That's going to clear. Yeah, let me do that right before we go. And then we're going to raid a Kiss for Lux channel here. Oh, you have to make the floodgate first. Okay, then we'll deal with it next time. Um, we're going to raid a Kiss for Lux channel. Again, she's playing Fallout 76, which is, which is a good game now. It was so garbage when it came out, but it's gotten a lot better. Hey, mutant one. Thank you very much. And yeah, I'll see you guys on Saturday for RimWorld. Ciao, everyone. Bye-bye.